Professor Pierre Mukoko Mbonjo is the Head of Institutional Reform Implementation Unit at the African Union. We thank you for accepting to talk to CRTV News. Thank you for inviting uh, me. We understand that you are following up uh, an ongoing reform at the African Union. Uh, right away, why is there a reform at the African Union and at this time? Uh, well, you know, since uh, the onset, the creation of the AU in 2002, the launching of the AU, uh, a number of organs were, were put in place. They have performed. I think that uh, for any organization, there comes a time when you need to assess what has been done and to see how to improve on what has already been done. So heads of state and government have decided to see to it that the AU becomes a more performant organization. And that's the reason why in January 2017, a decision was made by the conference, uh, the assembly of heads of state uh, to review among others the mandate of all the organs uh, apart from the policy organs, the Assembly and the Executive Council, and also to make sure that the political management and the operational management of the AU is more efficient and more effective. And also, also uh, one of the key issues is about financing of the union. As you know, we heavily depend on external donors, uh, uh, as an illustration, the financing of the program budget is about 96% from the, the donors. So hence the decision to have a levy of 0.2% on eligible imports in order to have a more sustainable way of financing the union, the operations of the union, 100%, the program, 75%, and peace and security operations, 25%. Uh, so it's a multifaceted reform. It deals with financing, it deals with relying uh, institutions, it deals with focusing on key priorities with continental uh, uh, scope, uh, for instance, political affairs, peace and security, uh, economic integration, uh, global representation, Africa must speak with one voice. It also deals with connecting with the citizens more than before, uh, hence uh, the promotion of gender, gender equality, the, the empowerment of youth, uh, the, the integration, I mean the participation of the private sector in the AU, AU, AU activities. So it's really a robust, a vast uh, program of reform. Robust is the word you, you used earlier on when talking to Pan-African parliamentarians. How bold is this? Is, are there any institutions you're taking out or empowering or controlling or confining? Well, it means to not really to take out institutions, especially those statutory organs. You have 11 statutory organs. There's no way mm -hmm. you can uh, take them away without amending the Constitutive Act. That's not uh, uh, the issue, it's to strengthen the mandate, to review the mandate, to make the mandate more relevant, so as to make the AU more relevant. How advanced are we in the process? Well, uh, in January, you know, the first uh, decision was taken in January 2017, uh, decision 635, then the second one in January 2018, decision 687. Uh, one of the key issues about implementation, implementation of decisions, uh, thousand, more than a thousand decisions uh, uh, were made by heads of state and government, and less than 10% were implemented. So one of the most uh, important decisions taken in January was to put in place a mechanism whereby legally binding decisions are duly implemented by state. Do you feel the Pan-African Parliament can play a role, finally? Absolutely, absolutely. The Pan-African Parliament brings together representatives of the people. And the Abuja Treaty of uh, June 1991 provided for Pan-African Parliament, which is a part, part of a, well, 
I mean, the big Pan-Africanist vision carried by uh, Kwame Nkrumah and so as a union government on one part and on the other part, uh, the parliamentary, uh, the Pan-African parliament. And we have the Pan-African parliament that does not have legislative power so far. It is still a consultative body, which plays a role as an advisory body. And the idea is now, first of all, to strengthen the mandate as it is now, and to see how to move progressively towards a full-fledged legislative organs. So it's very important that member states uh, ratify the, the protocol uh, on enhancing and empowering the Pan-African Parliament. And I'll, let me take the opportunity to commend the laudable efforts made by uh, President uh, Roger Kodo was me touring the continent. I'm an eyewitness when I was foreign minister and since, and since I'm head of the reform unit, I see him going from head of state to head of state, from parliament to parliament to make sure that the protocol is ratified. Well, thank you very much, Professor Pierre Mukoko Mbonjo, head of the Institutional Reform Implementation Unit at the African Union. Thanks for talking to CITV News. Thank you.